This video that you guys are about to watch is from my Omni Model course. If you want access to the entire course for free, yes, for free, you can get it by going to my website at allentrades.me. The link will also be in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoy this content. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right. So we just covered what is day trading, brokers, and some account terminology related to brokers. Now let's go over some of the type of markets there are to trade and my personal favorites. So as you can see, there are six different types of markets. And first we have currencies, which you may have heard of as Forex. Then we have treasury bonds. Third, we have stock indices. Fourth, we have commodities. Fifth, we have individual stocks. And sixth, we have crypto. Now with individual stocks and crypto, that won't be the main focus of this course. Now I've heard that concepts that I'm teaching in this course work in those markets. I just personally don't have any experience in those markets. So I'm not going to cover them because I don't want to talk about anything that I don't personally have any experience in, but feel free to trade those markets. Cause because like I said, though I've heard that the concepts that I'm teaching the ICT concepts, they work in any asset class, including individual stocks and crypto. But we're going to cover the first four and let's get into the first one. So we have currencies also known as Forex. And what is that? It is the value of currencies against each other. And we split those up into two main categories. First, we have the majors. So we have Euro USD, DUSD. So Euro USD is the Euro dollar versus the main dollar. Then we have the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. Then we have the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Then we have the Japanese dollar versus the, or my, I'm sorry, we have the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. And then we have the British pound versus the US dollar. Then we have the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. And then lastly, we have the US dollar versus the Swiss franc, which is CHF. Now, out of all the majors, the ones that are traded the most, the ones that have, have the highest volume. And the reason why you want to be in those is because those typically have the most volatility. They typically move the most and they move the cleanest, which is Euro, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and the British pound. Those four tend to move the cleanest compared to the other ones. That doesn't mean you can't trade the other ones. Like for example, the dollar CAD, so the U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar on days when there is economic reports about oil, because Canada is a big oil export country, that market tends to move pretty nicely. So we're going to get into the economic calendar when we talk about more of the timing of the market. But that's just a quick example of when you can trade the Canadian dollar and also that all these other majors have the potential to trade. Just the four that I mentioned tend to move the nicest compared to the others. Now for the second category, we have the miners and the miners consist of the Euro versus the British pound, Euro versus the Australian dollar, Euro versus the Japanese yen, the British pound versus the Australian dollar, the British pound versus the Japanese yen, the Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen, and lastly, the New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen. So these are the two different categories and it's pretty simple. Majors basically means that the US dollar is involved and minors mean that the US dollar is not involved. And why do we call it the major? It's because at the time of this recording, the US dollar is the global reserve currency, which basically means it's the number one currency in the world at the time of this recording. So as long as that stands, then um, the majors will always be considered the US dollar. So moving on, how do we measure currencies? Basically, we measure them in pips. It's how we measure how far a Forex pair has moved. Pips are the third and fourth digit after the decimal point, and a pipette is the fifth digit. Now, side note, pips for yen pairs are the first two digits, unlike any other pair where it's the third and the fourth digit after the decimal, and then the pipette for the yen will be the third. And so here I have an example of how we measure pips and pipettes for Forex. So here we have the British pound versus the US dollar. And so it's right now, if we look in the top left corner, it's trading at 1.26369. 
Now the third and fourth digit will be the pips. So 36 is the pip. Now let's say price moved, because we can see this down move right here, down to 1.26253. The pipettes in that will be what? The third and fourth digits. So that would be 25. So we had price move from 36 to 25, which would be 11 pips. Now for pipettes, we have the original price of where price was at, at 1.26369, and then price moved down to 1.26253. So now we're looking at the pipettes, which is gonna be the fifth digit. So in the first case, it will be the nine. And then in the second case, it will be three. So it has moved six pipettes. So overall, this entire price movement has moved 11 pips and six pipettes. All you have to remember is that the third and fourth digit for any pair not including the yen is the pips, and the fifth digit is the pipettes. If it was the yen, it would just be the first two, with the pipettes being the third. Now moving on to treasury bonds. There are three bonds that we look at, which are the 30-year note, the 10-year note, and the five-year note. And the bonds that we're looking at are going to be strictly the U.S. market. And these are directly influenced by the fluctuations in interest rate. That is basically what the bonds are. They're just a reflection of the interest rate. And you don't really need to know all the nitty gritty of the fundamentals. And by fundamentals, I mean like the interest rates and stuff. It is good to know the overall trend of our interest rates going up. Are they staying the same? Are they going down? Just to get a good feel of the market. But for what I'm teaching in this course, you do not need to directly know the exact number of what the interest rates are just like having a good general understanding and that's just a quick google search of knowing are interest rates going up down or are they staying the same and that can kind of influence how the bonds move and how does that work when interest rates are going up bonds or the treasury bonds tend to go down and when interest rates are going down the treasury bonds tend to go up so it's an inverse inverse correlation simple right so how do we measure bonds? We measure bonds in terms of points and we trade them in the futures market. So we measure the movement of bonds in terms of points, AKA handles. Some people call them handles. And we also refer to the numbers after the decimal as ticks. So with bonds, 32 ticks make up one point and each tick is worth 0 0.1 point. Bonds move by 0.1. And after 32 ticks, so from 0.1 to 0 0.32, that is considered one point in bonds. And so here we have an example. Price was originally at 12019. And I know, ignore the typo, it says 2019, but it's supposed to be 12019. And then price rallied up to 12224. So remember, the points is everything to the left and the ticks is everything to the right. So if we went from 120.19 to 122.24, we moved two points and five ticks because from 120 to 122, that's two points. And from 19 to 24, that's five ticks. Now remember, 32 ticks make up a point. So if we move two points, that's 64 ticks, right? Because 32 times two is 64. And then we want an additional five ticks. So that's going to bring you up to 69 ticks in total. So now moving forward, we have the stock indices. And the stock indices are basically the averages of the top companies in the United States. And we have three different stock indices. The first one being the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in the world. The NASDAQ 100, which is the top 100 companies in, in the world. And it's predominantly tech companies. And then we have the Dow Jones, which is the top 30 in the world. These lists change a little bit year in and year out. Some companies move in, some companies move out. You can always do a quick Google search to learn what are the top companies in the world, but you don't necessarily need to know it for day trading. Knowing that information is honestly not needed at all. We just need to know the stuff that you're going to learn later on in this course. But for completeness sake, I'm going to let you guys know what is included in each um, stock indice. And then if we look, you can see I have some nicknames. So we have ES, NQ, and YM. These are the 
contract symbols. So we trade this on the futures market as well. Same way we trade bonds on the futures market and the symbol that you would type into your trading platform. And don't worry, I'm going to go over trading platforms, all of that stuff too, with an in-depth tutorial, all that's going to be covered in this course. Like I told you guys before, this course is very comprehensive and I will not leave anything out. But those three are the symbol names. And then to the right, we have US 500, US 100, and US 30. You may re see people refer to the stock indices as that nickname. But if they do, that means they're probably trading or they're the futures market. They're trying to trade CFDs, which is banned in the US. But if you are overseas, you can trade the CFDs and they move pretty much identical to what the futures market in the US would represent. And so how do we measure stock indices? Like I was saying before, we trade it on the futures market similar to bonds and we measure it in terms of points, AKA handles and ticks. Unlike in bonds, four ticks make up one point and each tick is worth a quarter of a point. So 0 0.25. And so we have an example right here. Price was at 5,042. And then it moved all the way down to 5,016 and a quarter. So if we measure this entire price move. It has moved 25 points and three ticks because from 5,042 to 5,017 would be 25 points. And then it moved an additional three ticks because each tick is worth a quarter of a point. So 0 0.75, 0 0.50, and then to 0.25, that would give us three ticks. And then remember that each point overall is four ticks. So that means it moved 25 points times four, which would be a hundred and then three more ticks, which would be 103. I know it says 107, another typo, not sure how that happened, but it should be 103 ticks. In the PDF, all the typos will be fixed. So when you go back and you study this, you will see the correct information, but just know that it was supposed to be 103 ticks. And now moving on, we have commodities and commodities are split into three different categories. So the first one that we're going to go over are the metals and the oils. So for metals, we have gold, silver, and copper, and we measure all of these commodities are going to be measured on the future market in terms of ticks and points as well. But for metals, 10 ticks make up a point and each tick is worth 0.1 points. And then we move over to crude oil or we move over to the oils, which consist of crude oil and natural gas. And these don't have any ticks. They just move in points. Then moving forward, we have the grains and the food. This is the sec second section of the commodities. And for grains, we have corn, wheat, and soy soybean. Eight ticks make up one point. Each tick is worth 0 0.1 points. And then for the foods, we have cocoa, coffee, and sugar. And similar to the oils, it doesn't move in ticks. It only moves in points. Then moving on, we have livestock. And for livestock, we have lean hog, live cattle, and feeder cattle. And for this, we have 40 ticks make up one point, and each tick is worth 0 0.025 points. So not like the stock indices where it's 0 0.25, it's 0 0.025 points. That is each tick and 40 ticks would make up one point for the livestock. And so we have some examples above each one. So for the metals and oils, it's moving from 2051.9 to 2034.3. And then from grains to foods, it's moving from 591 and six to 606 and six. And then for livestock, it's moving from 73.325 to 76.325. So hopefully this gives you a good overall understanding of how the different commodity markets move and what the different type of commodity markets are. And so now we're going to move over to individual stocks. And basically individual stock is any company that's traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, like I said before, this trading course will not focus on individual stocks, even though I've heard that these concepts do work in this market. I just personally don't have any experience trading individual stocks, so I did not feel comfortable including something that I don't personally have any experience in. And then for the last one, we have crypto, which at the time of this recording is the most popular one. 
it just made like an all-time high so everyone's all hyped about crypto but like I said, also, I will not be covering this because I don't have any experience, but feel free to test these concepts out for yourself in that market if you want to. And now I know I said I will tell you guys my personal favorites. So here they are. The first one is the S&P, also known as ES. The second one is the NASDAQ 100. The third one is crude oil, also known as CL. And the last and final one is the 10-year treasury note, also known as ZN. Those are all the symbol names, the things in parentheses. Those are all the symbol names that you can find them on your trading platform. Now, I, I think it's important it's to highlight that while these are my personal favorites, you are not limited to just trade these markets. They're just what I tend to gravitate towards on a daily basis. But you can trade any of the markets that we just went over and you're going to gravitate to a few to um, a few of as you start to learn, but hopefully you're able to learn this skill set as a whole and you're able to click through a bunch of different markets, look, look at them real quick and get a good idea of which market is probably going to be the best one to trade for that day. But that's only going to happen once you have the overall skill set in your bag. Once you have that, then the opportunities are endless and you can trade any market that you want as long as it's as it's within right time of day, which we will go over. But that covers all the different types of markets. And now in the next video, we're going to talk about candlestick charts. And I'm going to give you guys an in-depth tutorial of the platform that I use to look at all the charts, which is called TradingView. So I hope you guys are finding this content interesting and informative, and I will see you guys in the next video.